Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We'll continue with our diode circuits and this is our third example. In this example I will look at a circuit where we have two diodes and also two sources. And there we, we need to assume some conditions to work out the analysis. So we will see that shortly. Of course we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have this circuit with two diodes already set and two sources VA and VB. The values are shown here and we also have three resistors R1, R2 and R3. The diodes are ideal what we assume here and use the constant voltage model. And that assumes that the diodes are on when the voltage across this diode in the forward direction is VD on which is 0.7 volts and when it is a reverse bias that means actually an open circuit then there is no current flow and the voltage across that node will be determined then by the other elements in the circuit so it is just VD on if it is a conduction and if it is less than VD on there is no conduction that is just a battery model all right now we have now here two sources already set VA and VB and the two diodes here. So in this case we need to be a little bit careful because we don't know which of the diodes are conducting. So we can assume that both are, are, are on or we can say D1 is on and D2 is off or any other. So we have actually four options here. So D1 is on, D2 is on, but D1 is on, but D2 is off or the reverse and both of them are off. So that is also possible. So we just start with an assumption and the first assumption I will make here as an assumption is that D1 and D2 are both on. So that is uh, my assumption. And then in this case I will also designate a point X here to start with the analysis. I start with the Kirchhoff's current law that is also the node, node voltage analysis at node X. And I will then develop the current equation. You can see this ID1 and ID2 will produce I2. So that's actually shown here. So I2 is ID1 and ID2 together. So I2 is this current is then Vx over, v, over R2. That's shown here. We also have this ID1 which is Va minus, assuming they are on, the D1, so Vd1 on, minus the voltage at node X divided by the R1. That is this part. And the final part is then the current flowing here in the D2, which is then VB minus VD2 on minus X divided by R3. Again, assuming that D2 is on, conducting. Okay, now let's then substitute the values. We have then VX over 100 for R2. And then we have VA10, 0 0.7, and then over 50, and a minus 50 for the uh, R1 and we have here for VB is 5 minus 0 0.7 minus VX over 200 so everything is substituted we can now work this out and simplify the left and right hand side by multiplying this by 200 so we'll get 2 VX is equal to 4 times this 9.3 minus VX and this is then 4.3 minus VX so if you work the parentheses out you will get this expression. Now if I now collect the Vx on the left side and the numbers on the right hand side, you have this expression, which says five or seven Vx is equal to 41.5. Now the Vx will be then 41.5 over seven will be then 5.93 volts. This is the condition or the value where we assume D1 and D2 are both on. Then we have the following. We know Vx, now we can move on and calculate the rest of the parameters. ID1 is again the same expression. Now if I now substitute the Vx we just found and also the Va and the Vd1 on, we have assumed here, then we can have the following current which says 67.4 milliamps, which is lower than zero, thus the Vd1 is on. So that assumption was correct. But we need to also check the conduction for D2. For that we also developed the current equation for ID2. 
Now ID2 is given by VB minus VD2 on minus VX over R3, which is the exact same expression we have used here in the first ex uh, expression for Kirchhoff's current law at node X. Now let's substitute the values. We have 5 minus 0 0.7 minus 9 point, uh, I mean 7, uh, 5.93 over 200. And this will give you minus 8.50 milliamps, which is less than zero, which is not possible. So that means D2 is off. So our assumption of D2 is on was not correct. So we move on and then adjust our assumption. Now we can say, let's assume that D1 is now on, but D2 is off. Okay, in this case, ID2 will be then zero because that is this part of the circuit will be then open. So that means the circuit is will looking like this. And again, we have node X here, but now the voltage here from this node to that node, from, from the right to the left, is VD2, but it is an open circuit voltage. Okay, now we move on. We again use the Kirchhoff's current law at node X. In this case, it's quite easy because ID1 is just ID2, because there is no other branch. So it is just a serious connection of this part of the circuit. So ID1 is equal to I2, and if I now look at ID1, which is VA minus, v, uh, minus uh, the VD1 on over the total resistance R1 and R2. Now, if I now substitute the value, it will be then 10 minus 0 0.7 over 150. Now, if I now work it out, it will get 62 milliamps. That is for the ID1. Again, you see that it's larger than zero and the assumption of D1 is on is still valid. Now let's move on and then we'll also calculate the I2, which is then required for the question C. Since this are in, are in series, we can say I2 is also 62 milliamps. Now what is now happening with the VD2? So let's also check that. Now you can calculate it in different ways. Let me first determine the Vx using the voltage divided rule, you can calculate the voltage across R2. You can also use Ohm's law, but this is another way. So it's then R2 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage drop across this resistor, which is then VA minus the VD1 on. Now, if I now substitute the values, you will have then 6.2 volts. Again, I said before, you can also use Ohm's law, which is maybe easier. You can say this current is I2 times the resistor is the voltage at node X. Because the current was 62 milliamps times 100 for the R2 will also give you 6.2 volts. So that is maybe easier for this case. Okay, now we look at the VD2. Now looking at the VD2 with the polarities from right to left, that means the VB minus Vx will be then Vd2. That's shown here. Now, we have 5 volts for the Vb, 6.2 volts just determined for Vx, that will give you minus 1.2 volts. And again, this provi proves that it is smaller than zero, so D2 is indeed off. And this condition, with the second assumption, verifies that our assumption is correct, that the D1 is on and D2 is off. Okay, now we will now look at the next step and use this assumption in our simulations. And these are the results as a summary for the question A, B, and C. Now, this is a circuit I have prepared in the simulator. You can see that D1, D2, and also the two sources, VA and VB, the resistors. What you see is there is a current here, ID1 and ID2. The current arrows as the same direction, also the current here. Now, we have determined 62 milliamps but it is 61.41 milliamps. So we have a little bit off. So let's say 0 0.6 milliamps an error. ID is very close to zero. You can see that it is a minus 1.001 nanoamps. So we can consider that as zero. So there is no current flow actually here. And that's also shown here because ID1 is equal to I2. So that is the proof that D2 is indeed off. But why is this error? So let me also clarify this. Now you can also make a table of results where you see the nodes in your circuit and the sum of the part, uh, the table is shown here. Now the voltage across D2, D1 is 
between 0.7 and 0.5 as shown here uh, it is now given in the red box is almost 800 millivolts so it is 788 or 89 millivolts so we have there approximately 89 millivolts error and that extra voltage across this diode which is not considered in our constant voltage model because we said it was 0.7 that will cause some error and that will reduce the current in the actual circuit and since this is the current in the actual circuit it will also mean that the current here in the i2 is the same thing so that is the reason why we have here a larger value and we have 0.7 for vd2 we have determined what minus 1.2 volts and you see here that is a little bit smaller again that is due to that error we have seen in the diode voltage drop for d2 but in general we can see it is very close to what we have calculated you can say the verification is done for this case let's also look at this in the spy simulator and also see how we can generate these tables there so let's now jump to the spy simulator all right we are now here in the circuit we see the two dc volt sources again and three resistors in the diode d1 and d2 the current arrows to measure the current and let's now do the following analysis dc analysis and go to the calculate no voltages that will give you directly the results for the measurements you want to make in your circuit so if i click on it you see the 61.9 or 60 uh, 61.49 approximately for 41 i mean milliamps here and this is almost zero let me again verify that the diode voltage drop d for d1 is not 0.7 volts but a little bit larger just click on it and it will be highlighted in red so from this the left and right hand side you can see the voltage is 788 or 789 approximately millivolts but this is again negative it means it is really reversed biased we can also verify this using the table of results going to analysis again dc analysis and table of dc results that will give you a lot of information i have just show you a part of it in the slides presentation so you can see if i click for example on one of the components here with my pen it will be highlighted in red and you can see its current and also its voltage specifically if i click on this one d1 again you can see the voltage here which is larger than 700 or almost 800 it's and this is the minus 1.14 volts and we had minus 1.2 volts again that error is due to that voltage drop across d1 which is larger than 700 millivolts we have assumed using our constant voltage all right so uh, let me again present the situation here for the case where we have calculated everything okay guys this is for the third example about a diode but in this case we have two diodes and two sources so if you have two or more sources and if you have a diode in there you cannot assume that they are just conducting you need to be very careful so you need you need to select or make an assumption before you make the uh, do the analysis and check your assumption afterwards if the assumption is correct now you have uh, have this uh, correct assumption but if the assumption is not correct you need to adjust your assumption if you have more than two diodes this can be of course a lengthy calculation so you can maybe already guess by experience which one is on and it will shorten your work if i will continue with another example showing this situation with a, another circuit where you have a current source also so this will be our fourth example if you have any questions about this example or any other example in this playlist, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. You can find the example number one and two also in the playlist shown in the description of this video. See you next time in another video. Take care.